Welcome to the CSSN channel. Our topic for today is the three inflammatory markers that should be checked once a year because they give us valuable information about someone's health. My name is Abuzar Habibinia. I have an MD degree and I'm the director of the Canadian Academy of Sports Nutrition. Subscribe to the CSSN channel on YouTube to enjoy the information that we share on a weekly basis about medicine, weight loss, fitness, and sports nutrition. Okay, today I'm going to talk about three important inflammatory markers that they give us valuable information about someone's health and well-being. Uh, I have put them on the whiteboard already for you. Those three inflammatory markers, they are CRP, ESR, and ferritin. Let's go one by one. CRP. CRP stands for C-reactive protein. CRP is a protein that is produced by the liver in response to any inflammation, infections, and even cancers. So CRP is produced by the liver within six hours of a triggering stimulus and will reach to its peak usually within 50 hours after two days. So CRP can increase in any kind of inflammation. Let's say you have colitis, arthritis, vasculitis in autoimmune diseases, in any kind of infections, bacterial, viral, fungal, and I would say even parasites, CRP can increase. And also in many cancers, CRP definitely can go up. And also CRP is a sort of biomarker of how much someone is at risk for cardiovascular diseases. This is why the American Heart Association and CDC Centers for Disease Control, they use CRP to define risk groups. The American Heart Association and CDC, they have suggested this. If your uh, CRP level is under one a milligram per liter you are low risk low risk for cardiovascular diseases and if your CRP level is between one to three uh, milligram per liter you have basically a moderate risk for cardiovascular diseases and if your CRP is more than three milligrams per liter, definitely you are uh, you have high risk for cardiovascular diseases. And if your CRP level is more than five grams per deciliter, in here they say that definitely you're gonna look for some sort of inflammation or maybe infection or even maybe a hidden cancers so you can see that how our crp is going to help healthcare professionals basically uh, to see what's going on the second test is called esr esr stands for uh, erythrocyte sedimentation rate uh, basically, in this test, they are going to measure how fast your red blood cells they are going to sit at the bottom of a tube in the lab. Okay, the normal range for ESR, usually it's between 1 to 25 uh, millimeters per hour. You know, you may see in some books, you know, from 1 to 29, 1 to 27, 0 to 20, but let's go normal range from 1 to 25 milliliter per hour there are lots of conditions that in those conditions esr is gonna go up. i'm gonna put in here esr is gonna increase us i'm gonna briefly mention them in here so if there is a, any kind of inflammation esr can go up if there is a, any infections infections of any kind esr can go up Cancers can go up. Low function thyroid, ESR can go up. If you have uh, anemia, 
if you have anemia ESR can definitely go up if you are taking birth control pill I'm gonna put in here OCP OCP oral contraceptives if you are taking birth control pill and you do blood work ESR might be higher and if you are taking anabolic steroids this is important for athletes if you are taking any kind of steroids if you are on a steroid cycle you do blood work ESR definitely will be higher than normal on the other hand there are a couple of medical conditions that ESR is gonna be low among them let's see what are those there is a medical condition we call it polycythemia vera it's a medical condition in which the production of red blood cell is very very high we call them PV polycythemia vera if someone has congestive heart failure congestive heart failure if you have it ESR definitely is gonna be low if you are suffering from chronic fatigue syndrome those people with chronic fatigue syndrome they have low ESR and definitely lots of medications can affect ESR for example if you are taking aspirin if you are taking Advil they're gonna lower your basically your ESR if you are taking statins lots of people they take statins medications Lipitor Crestor or any other statins you know to lower their bad cholesterol or they had I don't know sort of heart surgery after the heart surgery they're gonna put them on uh, one of those statins so adding corticosteroids I'm gonna put in here corticosteroids right for example if you are taking prednisone prednisone is the most commonly prescribed corticosteroid definitely uh, is gonna lower your basically ESR so as you can see ESR is gonna increase in a couple of medical conditions and also ESR is gonna go down in lots of conditions usually in medicine they say that ESR and CRP they move in in the same direction that means if this is high ESR should be high if ESR is high CRP should be basically higher than normal as well but in about 10 to 15 percent of cases we see mismatch mismatch means this CRP is high ESR is low or with a normal range or ESR is high CRP is within normal range this is something we call it mismatch usually if healthcare professional they see there is a mismatch uh, between CRP and ESR uh, they're gonna repeat the tests because the first thing that they're gonna come to their mind is maybe there is a lab error and if there wasn't in a lab error and still we see CRP and ESR mismatch between them definitely they're gonna look for the reasons I'm gonna give you basically two medical conditions uh, that in those two conditions usually we see mismatch we see mismatch between CRP and ESR heart attack if someone had a heart attack CRP is gonna go up ESR could be within normal range or stroke if someone had a stroke this one is gonna go up CRP could be normal right you, you can see there is a mismatch okay the last inflammatory marker is called ferritin actually ferritin is the total iron stores in the body but also ferritin is an important inflammatory uh, marker in the body so in these conditions ferritin is gonna go up I'm gonna put in here one by one if you have over there iron uh, overload if you have too much iron in the body for any reason sometimes your iron intake is very high sometimes you have some sort of diseases that your body absorbs iron more than usual for example there is a medical condition we call it hemochromatosis 
in those people their body absorbs lots of iron so when we have uh, basically iron overload ferritin is gonna go up if there is a any kind of inflammation in cancers if someone has liver diseases liver diseases ferritin can go up for example if someone has let's say fatty liver which is actually very common if someone has a fatty liver ferritin could be higher than normal and in people with fatty liver if ferritin has started going up that could be a sign that the person is going to develop actually insulin resistance and definitely in uh, two conditions that actually ferritin uh, could be lower than normal if someone has anemia if you have anemia of any kind right uh, ferritin is going to be low and if you have uh, we call them gi basically bleeding if you have some sort of internal bleeding but you are not aware of it ferritin could be low as you can see these three inflammatory markers crp esr and ferritin they give us valuable information all three of them they could go up in any kind of inflammation infections and even heating cancers this is why i strongly suggest you check your crp esr and ferritin levels at least once a year i really hope that you learn something interesting today because we make science easy to understand now you know if you don't want to miss our weekly video you can subscribe to the CSSN channel on uh, YouTube to support us you can share like or comment on this video until next time stay safe stay connected